If you are a beginner in Final Cut Pro or you know your way around the editor quite well, but you wanna get faster, then this is the video for you. So let's dive into the 15 keyboard shortcuts that I have used consistently over the last 10 years to make me a faster editor. So the first tip here is your in and out points. You're gonna use the I and the O on the keyboard. Now, practically speaking, we have some A roll here. So I'm gonna to come to the beginning of a waveform move over to the end of the waveform, hit O. So now that you have your in and out points set, another trick you can do in point number two is the F key. So this is setting your favorites. So if you just hit F on the keyboard, you'll see this little green line show up here. So this is super helpful when you're scanning through your B roll. You can see I have all these little green points set up on my footage. This is footage that I can use. So next time when I come into the editor, you come up to this little spot here, dive into your favorites and it's only gonna have your favorite B-roll selected. This keeps you from having to cycle through your footage all the time to find the footage you like. This is all the good stuff right here. Once you have your favorite clips selected, we're gonna come up here and we wanna drop our A-roll down onto the timeline. So there's three ways you can do that and that is with the Q, the W, and the E key. They all do different things, so the E key drops your clip at the end of your timeline. So if I hit E again, it's gonna drop it again at the end. The W key drops it wherever you have your inspector on the timeline. So if we come in between the clips here and I hit W, it's gonna drop the clip in between. And the next one is Q, if you wanna put something on top of your A roll, so say we wanna take some of this B roll, and drop it on top, we can just then hit Q and that's gonna put it on top of our timeline. So that is Q, W, and E, and you can use them all interchangeably and it makes you a really fast editor if you wanna put your B-roll on top of your footage and you've already got your selects so you know you can just drop these on top and it makes you super quick. Now that leads me into the next tip which is how to create keyframes. So practically if you have A-roll, you want your music to tuck under your voice. So I'm gonna hold Option or Alt on your keyboard and we're just gonna create keyframes. So once you hold Option and click, it's gonna create those keyframes. So from here, I can then drag the audio down and move those keyframes to wherever I need to drop it under the audio. So another thing to make you even faster in creating those keyframes is let's say you've got a whole bunch of B-roll on the end that you wanna use and you wanna bring the music back up over that B-roll you can hit R on your keyboard, which opens up the range tool. So then we're gonna take the range tool and drag it all the way across this B-roll. And from there, we can actually just drag this audio back up and it's gonna create those keyframes for us on either end. Then you hit A again to get back to your regular mouse, your pointer or whatever. And then you can drag around those keyframes. So that's a little bit faster than hitting option and you have to like perfectly hit that line and then drag them around. That range tool will create those keyframes for you super fast. The next tool is a pretty standard one and that's the blade tool. So if these clips are too long, oftentimes you'll hit B, that'll bring up your blade tool and you can start cutting these, then A and moving these around, deleting them. How I tend to cut is by either holding option B so I don't have to go to the blade tool. That way it keeps me on my cursor. I don't have to keep switching between tools. Or practically speaking, if you wanna hit your marks on a certain point and you wanna cut your clip here, I hold option and then this little forward bracket or something like that, I think they're called. You can, again, select these to whatever you want, but option out is then this button. So you have your ins and outs so you can set your in points here and then bracket them and your out points and bracket them again. So then you're cutting the forward end and the back end and then creating your clip in the middle. So now let's say you've cut those clips to the music and it's perfectly timed exactly where you want it, but maybe it's not the part of the clip that you want. This is my favorite tool and this is the, I believe it's called the trim tool, but you hit the T button and then you can drag this clip back and forth so it doesn't change the timing, but it changes what you see inside of that clip, which is so helpful. Then your timing stay the same and you can just move these clips back and forth as you need. And as you can see, it splits it up into two screens so you can see what's happening at the end point and what's happening at the end point of that clip. Now, one of the features in Final Cut Pro is the magnetic timeline. So you drop a clip on and you want it to align perfectly with one of these clips. You can see that that yellow marker comes up and that is it magnetizing to a certain clip. But there's also a lot of times that you don't want any of these clips to magnetize. So what you do is you hit 
in and this unsticks the magnetic timeline and then you can drag it wherever you want. Click in again and then it will magnetize to wherever you want it to magnetize to. So as I'm just kind of fiddling around with the footage here, I'm coming up with even more tips. So I hope you guys have a pen and paper and are writing these down. Shift Z is so helpful and I use it all the time. What that does is it takes your whole timeline, whether you're zoomed out, you hit Shift Z and it just puts your whole timeline back and extends it throughout there. Command minus will make your timeline shorter and command plus will expand it based on where your key is. So if it's there, it's gonna zoom in there. If it's over here, you're gonna zoom in over there. So wherever you have that placeholder is, that's where it's gonna zoom in. Then Shift Z will open it back up to the whole timeline and give you an overview. So in regards to moving around your timeline quickly, if you use these left arrow keys here, this is gonna move your selected clip left and right accordingly. And if you hold Shift and use these buttons, it's going to move at 20 frames. So that's how you can delicately move clips around or quickly shift and move them over if you need to move them over delicately. This just keeps you from having to drag and if you want to move it magnetically and then just move it a couple frames over, that's another way to do it as well. Another quick thing that I use all the time is creating space in the timeline. So the way that it is set up in Final Cut Pro is Option W and that will create a little space in your timeline here if you want a break underneath your B-roll for example and you just wanna push some stuff around, you can do that by creating Option W. Now a quick hack that I've set up is I'm often using background generators. So I've set that up to be Option Q. Otherwise you have to come up here into this tab then come all the way down to generators and then find the generator that you want. I'm always using either a white or a black backdrop and that is this custom one here. So I've set that custom backdrop to my default generator and then I've set that to option Q in my quick preferences. Now if you're wanting to move around your timeline quickly as well, you can use the arrow keys. So up and down on your arrow keys is going to move you to the next I guess we'll call it moment in your timeline, but it's always gonna land on a end or beginning of a clip or a keyframe. So practically speaking, if you're on the timeline and you wanna add a clip in between this one, you can move over to it using the up or down arrow keys and then have a clip selected in your timeline and hit W and we will then put our clip in between those two clips. One of the things that I use all the time is color wheels, color curves and hue color saturation panels. So I have those preset instead of coming up here to this panel and having to click these, grab a color wheels. Instead what I've done is I've changed my quick commands to be control C for a color wheels. Control X gives me color curves and control H gives me hue and a saturation panel. Because I'm using these all the time to color grade my footage, this is a way faster way than clicking and dragging through here. It means you don't have to do those like finite details of moving your mouse around. We know we're gonna use them, so that's a quick way of doing it. Some of these keyboard shortcuts are native to Final Cut Pro, but some of them I have changed for myself. So to get to those keyboard shortcuts, you're gonna come up here to the Final Cut Pro button. You're gonna go into Commands and customize. So from here, you can actually learn all of the already set keyboard shortcuts, but for the few of them, we're gonna adapt and change them ourselves, and this is the panel in which you wanna do it if you wanna change your custom keyboard. And as you find the tools that you use the most in Final Cut, I highly recommend coming in here and adapting your keyboard to make it easier for you and get faster. Another way that I've gotten faster in color grading is because I'm using the same camera all of the time, I've got a preset for Vlog to Rec 709. It has my custom LUT already attached for Rec 709 and Lumix and my color wheels and color curves that I often use. Then you just can quickly dive into these things and correct the colors as you need with your camera. So to create those, you just save effect presets once you have those dialed in. I think I've given you guys a lot more than 15 tips here. So if there was a lot there, make sure to go back, grab your notepad and write these down or just play through the video again because that helps the YouTube algorithm. So speaking of which, if you did enjoy this, if you learned something new, please hit that like button for me. Comment down below which tip maybe was your favorite. And otherwise, guys, I appreciate your time a lot. Consider subscribing if you want more content like this and you might like this video here. But truly, thank you. I appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.